after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the various soot removal techniques, how flammable liquids affect the finger ridge impressions and how the finger ridge impressions can be recovered from an arson site or from the arson cases. Latent fingerprint ridges or the latent friction ridges are typically comprised of chemicals secreted by the eccrine and the sebaceous glands plus the miscellaneous contaminants. The pores of the eccrine glands are located directly on the friction ridges whereas the sebaceous materials are transferred to the fingers by frequent contact with the face, neck and scalp where the sebaceous glands occur in high density. Subsequently, friction ridge residues are comprised of the chemicals contained in the sweat and sebum. The composition of eccrine sweat is in excess of 98% water and it also contains a wide variety of inorganic salts such as salts and trace elements including magnesium and zinc and the organic components example amino acids proteins and lipids for friction ridge detection the compounds of primary interest within sweat are the amino acids such as serine glycine orthonine and alanine which react with nenhydrine or 1,8 diaza fluorine 9 ohm that is the dfo and 1 to indindone to produce colored and or the fluorescent reaction products that can be visualized and recorded. Sebum composition shows much variation between individuals but the major lipid component have been identified as the fatty acid in the percentage of 37.6. Wax esters with diglycerides in the percentage of 25 triglycerides with monoglycerides and cholesterol esters that is 21 percent esqualine is 14.6 percent and cholesterol is 3.8 percent these sebaceous components are valuable for the latent friction ridge detection because they persist even in the presence of water and can be detected by a wide variety of physical and chemical techniques such as powders, physical developers, iodine and a small particle reagent or the SPR reagent and cyanoacrylate fuming technique. The chemical reactivity of these friction rich components have been exploited by the crime scene examiners who utilized optical, physical and the chemical means to develop visible images of latent friction rich impressions. In most crime scenes, this friction ridge reactivity is used to detect the latent impression. In a challenging crime scene where the environment might be contaminated with other materials such as chemical, explosive or drug residues, these functional groups may also react with the contaminant. The latent friction ridges that has been exposed to such environments may suffer from reduced reactivity to detection chemicals. For the purpose of this review, some challenging crime scenes have been restricted to the crime scenes or exhibits exposed to arson, explosive residues, radioisotopes, chemical and biological warfare agents and the decontamination agents used to neutralize them. It is often misstated that the physical evidence will be completely consumed during the progress of the fire and the subject matter experts often assume that charred or the soot covered fire debris offers no hope for the detection of finger ridge impression or the friction ridge impressions. While there is no doubt that the physical and chemical properties of friction ridge impressions will be affected by the extreme environment created by a fire such as the elevated temperature, water exposure and high levels of gases including carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, both casework and the research work indicated that friction ridge impressions and more 
recently the DNA can survive such exposures. These theories are particularly based on some or the other researches that has been particularly done on the friction ridge impression and the effects they have pertaining to a specific arson crime scene. Some of the recent work demonstrates that objects close to the seat of fire may yield friction ridge impression if the surface has been covered by soot or debris to protect it from the flame. Even badly damaged objects should be considered as the underside may be relatively undamaged and yield friction ridge impression also. For many fire investigation proving that arson was committed is relatively easy as compared to proving that a particular person was involved in the case. Forensic examination of arson scenes should be pursued so that the valuable physical evidence such as the friction ridge impression that could be used to identify the suspect is not overlooked. Next we will study about the soot removal techniques. Often the first step in examining the arson exhibit for friction ridge impression involves the removal of soot. In 1938 Harper developed the friction ridge impression by simply brushing the soot of the surface thereby allowing the carbon particles to adhere to the oily residues in the ridges. He further explored the effect of elevated temperatures on friction ridge impressions placed on a variety of different substrates including glass, porcelain, metal plates, enameled metal and painted and unpainted wood also. He observed that the friction ridges quickly covered with a layer of soot were more likely to survive than the exposed impressions as the soot appeared to prevent evaporation of the friction ridge matrix. In addition, Harper exposed soot covered friction ridges on metallic surfaces to temperatures reaching approximately 500 degrees Celsius and discovered that on washing with water, the ridges appeared to be burned into the surface and could not be removed even by rubbing. After the surfaces dried, soot removal was completed by gentle brushing. Although this study did not accurately record the experimental conditions or thoroughly examining the effects of elevated temperatures on the recovery of aged friction ridges, the paper does refer to three month old friction ridge sample that were exposed to fire. After being covered in soot, they were developed by washing, drying and brushing cleaning. If the print was allowed to evaporate to dryness as a result of fire prior to soot deposition, then the friction ridges could not be recovered also. The first report describing the retrieval of latent friction ridge impressions from an arson case did not appear in the literature for several decades. In the year 1978, McLeod described the processing of a soot covered unbroken soda bottle that was purported to be a Molotov cocktail recovered from a partially burned apartment building. The debris and soot were recovered or removed by brushing the surface with a fiberglass fingerprint brush using soft gentle strokes which revealed the soot developed friction ridge impressions on the rippled glass bottleneck. Remaining soot was removed by washing with soap and water. Attempts to lift the impression from the surface resulted in unidentifiable images due to the rippled texture of the substrate. One year later, Wogan promoted rinsing the soot covered exhibits such as glass, doorknobs, flammable liquid containers and car door handles under running water claiming that fingerprints appeared edged into the glass. The presence of gasoline and the kerosene on the surface of the substrate was reported to decrease the effectiveness of this recovery method most likely due to the hydrophobic nature of these fuels that would have repelled the water from the surface. 
The suit removal techniques were further developed by Thornton and Immons, who suggested that the use of lifting tape to remove the suit remaining on the friction ridge impressions that were only partially revealed by water rinsing. The method was reported to work well for the suit covered latents on metals and glass surfaces. In 1994, Spawn Field tested the water rinsing technique using deliberately set incendiary fires involving everyday household items with latent fingerprints deposited onto the surfaces. Kerosene and gasoline mixture was used to start the fires and typical fire suppression techniques were employed after intense heat and thick black suit was allowed to develop. Items closest to the fire revealed no ridge impressions on visual examination whereas surfaces exposed to only heat and soot but no flame revealed that many friction ridge impressions following water rinsing. Water rinsing revealed that several fingerprint impressions which were further enhanced by the application of lifting tape and these impressions were burned onto the surface and could not be removed by aggressive rubbing also. Again, it was observed that suit acted as a protective layer, providing it formed on the latent friction impression before the surface experienced flames. In some circumstances, the formation of the suit layer helped to bake the friction ridge impression onto the metallic surface. Wiley reported immersing the suit covered latent friction ridge impressions on glass into a 2% sulfur salicylic acid solution so as to fix the latent ridges. The glass was then immersed into a sonic bath containing 0.1 molar of sodium hydroxide solution to remove the suit layer from the baked on fingerprints. The technique was tested using a mock living room fire scene in which the neutral plane of fire was allowed to reach the floor level before the fire was being extinguished off. This allowed significant smoke to develop. A total of 18 sets of fingerprints were recovered from the glass bottles using this particular suit removal technique or method and which were processed with either powder or with cyanoacrylate and brilliant yellow 40 that is BY40. Based on successful field experiences using the sodium hydroxide wash solutions to remove the suit layers without significantly damaging the friction ridge impressions, Stowe and McGurry published an extensive study of suit removal techniques including the sodium hydroxide wash solutions of the concentration of 1% and 2% and with an ultrasonic water bath and vacuum suction. Pure gasoline and a 1 is to 1 mixture of gasoline and motor oil were used to contaminate the finger marks as well as being the flammable component within the glass incendiary devices. In the initial laboratory test, contaminated and natural finger marks on glass substrates that have been subjected to controlled burns were examined using aluminium powder, SPR and Sudan black. Similar tests involving burning of a cotton or polyester sheet so as to produce soot were performed to compare the soot removal methods also. Washing the soot with 1% or 2% sodium hydroxide solution allowed the recovery of both the contaminated and the natural finger marks. The 30 minute water ultrasound bath failed to produce any finger marks with the gasoline or motor mix in the ratio of 1 is to 1 but was successful for all the other tests. In field test, the friction ridge recovery was attempted after the glass incendiary devices were detonated which resulted in much heavier contamination due to the accelerant. Under these conditions, the ultrasonic water bath, the vacuum and 
soft brush suit removal techniques did not perform as well as the 1% and 2% sodium hydroxide wash solutions. The researchers observed that when applying the sodium hydroxide solutions, care must be taken so as to avoid washing away of the ridge detail or the finger ridge detail. Blee and co-workers compared numerous suit removal processes including many that have been already described that is washing under running water, ultrasonic water bath, washing with sodium hydroxide followed by lifting tape, light brushing, lifting tape and pencil eraser. They also tested the commercial suit removal methods that is with the clean film, cleaning sponge, Epsorin and Microsil TM. A sequential suit removal process was recommended in which the least destructive methods must be tried initially followed by those considered the most likely to destroy both the fingerprints as well as DNA. For all substrates, light brushing with a soft fingerprint brush so as to remove the loose debris were recommended so that subsequent suit removal techniques would be more effective. If the non-porous surface is flat and the exhibit has a simple shape then application of flexible lifting tape using a roller is found to work best. Next is effects of flammable liquids on latent friction ridge impressions. The presence of flammable liquids on the surface of the substrate has been reported to decrease the effectiveness of suit removal technique. The recovery of suit developed friction ridges by water rinsing described by Vaughan was compromised by liquids such as gasoline and kerosene. As mentioned earlier also, the hydrophobic nature of these flammable liquids repels the water from the surface impeding the suit removal. In contrast, Tyransky and Petraco believed that the presence of gasoline in a plastic bowl used to transport and distribute the gasoline throughout an apartment that was subsequently set on fire had created a plastic friction ridge impression in the rim of the plastic bowl. The plastic bowl was slightly soluble in the gasoline and the action of carrying the gasoline filled vessel had resulted in a molded impression and that being left in the plastic. The impression was retrieved using silicone casting materials so as to create a three-dimensional impression which was transferred to white paper by covering the surface with black ink. The friction ridge impressions was identified to a suspect in an arson case. Stowe and McGurry prepared the Molotov cocktails using clean glass bottles that had both the good and the poor quality friction ridge impressions placed on the glass and the plastic label surfaces. The bottles were then carefully filled with gasoline or a gasoline motor oil combination in the ratio of 1 is to 1 mix and a cotton or polyester wick that was inserted into the neck. Each Molotov cocktail was ignited, thrown against a pre-cleaned detonation area and allowed to burn naturally. Over 90% of the contaminated glass fragments from each bottle were recovered and subjected to different suit removal techniques before the friction ridge recovery with cyanoacrylate or the brilliant yellow 40. The researchers observed that it was particularly difficult to develop marks which had been exposed to gasoline and motor oil mix due to the persistence of the oil on the surface. They observed the greatest success at the recovery from these heavily contaminated friction ridge impressions when the glass fragments were soaked in 2% sodium hydroxide that is sometimes for up to 30 minutes that is half an hour. Next we will study about the recovery of latent friction ridge impressions. Also noted that the accidental development of latent fingerprints on magazine paper resulting from the heat of a fire and illustrated fingerprint impression that were 
identified to the arsonist. Brown etc. all observed that the rapid heating of latent fingerprint impressions on a variety of porous surfaces in air over a temperature range of 220 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius resulted in fingerprints that initially could be seen to fluoresce under green illumination having a wavelength of 503 nanometers but with continual heating would eventually appear dark brown under white illumination until they lost all contrast due to the background charring. The researchers also noted that these observations held for both the eccrine and the sebaceous rich impressions also. In contrast, a study involving a variety of good latent fingerprint impressions deposited onto the white recycled paper exposed to longer heating regimes at the lower temperatures of about 160 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius compared to brown etc all showed that only the eccrine component flourished. In the early 1980s, it was suggested that simply breathing onto the arson exhibit could rehydrolyze the dried friction rich impression and improve the adhesion of the fingerprint powders. Shelef etc. all examined the ability of several friction ridge detection techniques including SPR, cyanoacrylate and brilliant yellow 40 combination, the silver black powder, crystal violet and the forensic light sources examination so as to detect the freshly deposited impressions that had been briefly immersed in a variety of fire accelerants. Some of the friction ridges following exposure to the accelerant were left for several days before being processed. The researchers were able to recover about 80 to 90 percent of the five day old impressions and 50 to 60 percent of the 13 day old impressions using either the SPR reagent or the cyanoacrylate fuming technique. Although the cyanoacrylate fuming technique process showed a slightly improved performance as compared to that of the small particle reagent technique. The cyanoacrylate technique was abundant as it was difficult to implement at the scene of crime. The simulated Molotov cocktail exhibits prepared by filling the glass bottles with different fuel mixes were thrown against a test wall and either were allowed to burn out, were extinguished and were not ignited again. The glass surface was examined using the sequence of techniques that is first with the visual examination under white light, then the forensic light source and then came the cyanoacrylate fuming technique followed by the vacuum metal deposition method or the VMD method. It was reported that the removal of the suit layer without impairing the friction ridge impression was very difficult. No data on the performance of the specific detection technique were provided except that ninhydrin proved to be an effective and you can say a very effective at recovering latent friction ridge impressions on the paper labels. In another experiment, the aluminium powder, the small particle reagent and Sudan black were used to detect both natural friction ridge impressions and those contaminated with gasoline and a gasoline or motor oil mix of the ratio of 1 is to 1 and that had been subjected to controlled burns and sodium hydroxide wash solutions for the suit removal. Both aluminium powder and SPR performed well, although adding motor oil to the incendiary mixture resulted in residue on the glass surface that prevented either development technique from being effective. In the field test, the friction ridge recovery was attempted using cyanoacrylate and brilliant yellow 40 mix after the glass incendiary devices were detonated which resulted in much heavier contamination of accelerant. Under these conditions, the friction ridge recovery was compromised but was still possible. 
a recently published comprehensive study regarding the recovery of friction ridge impressions from arson was reported by Blee and co-workers. Rather than comparing the existing methods of friction ridge recovery, the researchers first tried to establish the range of temperatures and exposure time for which the latent friction ridges can survive. They developed a best practice for suit removal and subsequent friction ridge recovery on a variety of non-porous and porous substrates likely to be encountered at any typical arson case. All arson examinations should begin with a thorough visual inspection first since the action of heat and soot can develop the friction ridge impression on the exhibit also. The development may be due to the preferential soot deposition onto the ridges, heat development of friction ridges on paper and the impressions being baked onto the metallic surfaces. Black or white powder suspensions proved to be the best treatment for non-porous surfaces exposed to temperatures up to 200 degrees centigrade. These methods were also effective for adhesive substrates. For the non-porous substrates above the temperature range of 200 degrees centigrade, superglue fuming was most effective providing the surface was dry and the vacuum metal deposition technique was the technique of choice if the surface had been wet. For porous substrates, DFO was the best performing method providing the surface had not been exposed to water. Physical developer was the reagent recommended for porous substrates that had been wet. The near infrared imaging using a near infrared sensitive camera and filter having a cut on wavelength of 715 nanometers or above proved to be very useful in case of charred paper. Now students, let us summarize this module of all that we have studied. The latent friction ridges are typically comprised of chemicals secreted by eccrine and sebaceous glands plus the miscellaneous contaminants. The chemical reactivity of these friction ridge components has been exploited by crime scene examiners who utilize optical, physical and the chemical means so as to develop visible images of latent friction ridge impressions. Often the first step in examining any arson exhibit for the friction ridge impression involves the removal of soot or the soot removal technique. The suit removal technique were further developed by Thornton and Emmons who suggested that the use of lifting tape so as to remove the suit remaining on the friction ridge impressions that were only partially revealed by water running. Then next is the presence of flammable liquids on the surface of the substrate has been reported to decrease the effectiveness of suit removal technique. All arson examinations should begin with a thorough visual inspection since the action of heat and soot can readily develop the finger ridge impressions onto the exhibits and the samples.